Hello and welcome back. It is painting video time. Okay, so a moment ago we just finished one of these short little dudes and we're gonna paint up all three of these, but we're gonna do them different colors. So you know that Mario mushrooms come in, you know, red and green, red for the power of mushrooms, green for the life. And uh, we're gonna do one for fun. We're gonna do one as purple. So we're gonna do one purple mushroom, this little taller guy, he'll be uh, funky. So we're gonna do that. For him, we're going to use Purple Rain. Get this light on there just right. There we go. So we're gonna use Purple Rain for the purple mushroom. For the red mushroom, we're gonna use True Red. And for the green mushroom, we're gonna go a little bit fancy. And we're gonna go Sour Apple and Crocodile. So we're gonna do Crocodile first, and then I'm gonna try to dry brush pretty heavily with Sour Apple to give a little texture to that green for this fella here. Now we're also gonna use black paint for those little bits of eyes. And then for the base of the mushroom, I kinda wanna have that pretty natural. But to do that, cause we're gonna antique these as well, we're probably gonna use a little bit of beige, pretty watered down to keep that, that tone of the wood, but uh, still be able to antique it and not have it go really dark on that antiquing solution. And uh, yeah, I think that's where we're at. Now, for the red, should I go dry brush that? No. You know what, I think we're gonna do it a little fancy with this guy though. And rather than just do purple, let's do pink as well. And let's see if we can actually blend purple and pink. And I haven't done a video in a bit on blending colors. And so uh, we'll do that right now. That way people have an opportunity to see paint blending. I can go over it with you. That way you know, and I don't have to have as many questions on things that I haven't shown. All right, so what are we gonna start with? Let's go ahead and start with the red. He's the easiest guy to get done. Simple, one color, nothing fancy. <clears throat> there we go. A little bit of red, true red, rojo. And we'll be painting, of course, white specks on everything as well when we're done. And we'll maybe get a, a quarter or something like that to hold that size. Here's one I got done in a one by one I did a long time ago. And I used a nickel at that time to trace out the line for that circle. And that worked pretty well on this little guy. But uh, he's been sitting on the shelf for quite some time. Okay. Now, on this guy, I am going to mix the paint and water the paint down on the carving as I usually do. And these are dry carvings. So now that I wet carvings down, I did not wet these down prior. So they are just completely dry, which means they're gonna soak this paint up and if that's going to cause me a problem, I'm going to find out in this guy, and I'll see whether or not I need to go wet these carvings down. But I think it's working out pretty well. Working out just fine. Try to get up to that line and not go too far, so I don't get on the base. When you're not wearing gloves or anything, even when you are, be careful where you put your fingers so that you don't get into the paint and then onto the unpainted part of the wood, tracking that stuff all over the place, dirtying up your carving. That's the easiest way, I think, to make a mistake in painting wood figures or anything small. That red's really turning out well. I like that. You see, I'm holding it upside down too because as I'm wetting this stuff down, that water's gonna run. And I'd rather it run off the carving and not onto the unpainted sections. So that's the reason I'm holding it upside down so that when that water runs, as it inevitably will, it's going somewhere else and not going to be causing me problems.
take a little moment here to go a little bit slower as I color this in along that front and that worked out pretty well for something like this where you're going for a, a very solid color and not wanting to change too much having a, a pre-soak on there of water or boiling seed oil doesn't really help that much so it doesn't change that much either so on these guys here they're too simple i'm not worried about that on a figure carving i might have done more but that's gonna look pretty neat now you could just leave this base just like it is paint those black and put some white on there and you'll be, you'll be pretty close to being done if you wanted to but uh we'll do more of that later okay so let's go with the crocodile green for a green mushroom and then we'll dry brush on there afterwards after we dry them up i need some paper towels so why the paper towels because i just use this paintbrush for red and rinsing off there is fine well and good but i don't want to have any red on the green of this mushroom so as i water it down and clean up i'm wiping it here on this to see if i see any more red coming out and i'm going to do that until i don't see any red and i think i pretty much got it there so now i can continue painting and now i have to worry about staining this beautiful carving with a different color so for those of you uh who haven't done so already please head over to instagram and follow me there i often share photos every couple days at the very least of what i'm working on what i got going on and uh, i always want input want to hear from people see what they think and if you see something you like that i've carved you can easily talk me into maybe doing a tutorial on it by saying something so head over to instagram check me out there give me a follow if i see carvings in your uh, history i'm probably going to follow you back if i don't just say hello say something like that oh in other news i'm going to be on the international association of wood carvers on november 2nd of 2024 so depending on when you're seeing this video that could be in the future or it could be in the past if it's in the past go over and watch the video they'll have posted it on youtube if it's in the future make sure you tune in and uh come support me if you would i'm a little bit nervous about it because well frankly <laughs> all of the folks who have been on the international association of woodcarvers are heroes of mine in a lot of ways and they're better carvers than i am and just the fact that i was asked to be on there and to present feels like an honor honestly so i'm pretty excited about that but uh all the people that have been on it are just fantastic david young from david young wood carving he just did his and that was fantastic to see it was good to hear from him see his face i have followed his carvings for a while and i have loved his work for quite some time he is one of the folks that i was watching quite religiously all their videos as i was learning and getting better at carving him doug linker dadalo carving is fun all those guys and now i'm making videos for you myself too I'm trying to be like them be like all those other guys but provide my own flair that's that's turning out pretty good okay so we got this one painted the darker green and uh, we're going to dry brush that lighter green to make it more the color that we are looking to go for and uh yeah our mario mushrooms are going to be pretty neat okay so we'll let that one dry now this is going to be the fun one right because we're going to do a little bit of uh of color blending what do you think Lindsay? do you think the top should be pink or purple 
You make go up to lighter color at the top or darker color at the top. She's not listening to me. She's listening to an audiobook right now while she does her puzzle over there. Mm -hmm. I was asking what you thought. Do you think I should do the this this purple one here with pink or pink and purple? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do two colors, I think, and blend it. Do you think the purple should be the bottom or purple should be at the top? The bottom. The bottom? Okay. The wife has made her decision. We're gonna do purple at the bottom. These are gonna go on our shelves. These aren't gonna go anywhere other than for us. So for this, watering it down significantly on the paintbrush, and the bottom here is gonna be pretty heavy. I'm not even worried about blending too much yet, right? So I'm just gonna do a heavy bottom row. We want this bottom to be nice and purple. Like so. Just move right along, get some more water there. Then we can start to bring that down a little bit. Now, when you're blending, you're just gonna water the crap out of it. Blending is messy, messy as can be. So you see, I start to blur that line there. That heavy line there, that's gonna be heavy there. Cause we, we did it heavy to start with, but we're just getting some water on the bottom here and blending it down. And it's not gonna look good at first, definitely not. Not gonna look good till we get closer to being done. Ooh, don't bleed down too much yet. And if it doesn't work out, it looks terrible. That's okay. No one else has to know. You just won't see this one in the uh, snapshots for the video. <laughs> but I don't think it'll work, work out bad. I think it'll work out pretty good. Okay, so we want to have that purple at about this level so it can be pretty uniform as it goes around. And then we want, this is part where the, where the, having the wood wet is probably a good thing. Let's go ahead and dip him, right? We're wetting all that down there because now we're going to start to use the pink and put it right here at the top. And this is a messy process with blending, but basically you're using a lot of water and just working it towards one another. And I work it down here. You're gonna do several coats as well. And the first couple coats don't look great. And we're gonna have that purple line come up pretty high, but it's gonna slowly blend in because that purple is the darker color. That's the one that's gonna travel further. Let's darken up along the top here on this end grain with the pink. Let's see how dark we can get the pink. Kind of sink that in. And we're not going to water this last bit down. And just push it into that ingrain to give the top as much of a pink cast as we can. Oof. We can get it on that side there. This is the problem with something that's too wet. But that's okay. We'll fix it. We won't have that be clean wood down there. We'll do that beige. Because we're learning about paint blending. And paint blending is messy. Alrighty. Now, the purple. 
I'm getting out of the camera frame, sorry. So we slop it on there and then we blend it in. Lots of water. Lots of water as we go. More paint. And then lots of water. A little more pink for the top. And there are people who probably have better methods than me. If they do, when it comes to blending, I don't know them. If I did, I'd be using their methods. Right now, this is all I got. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to dry this up a little bit. Right? Not wiping, just patting. So we can kind of see what we got going on a bit more. So, we're going to use a little bit less water now. That was our first reset. And this is with less water, right? It's a wet paintbrush, but no water on it after I dipped the paint in. And now, I get some purple paint. And we start working it up. I just dipped it in some water. Okay, we're gonna start feathering it right on up. Like I said, a hot mess. That's what blending is. And I don't know a way to make, get blending done without just being a hot mess. As I get better, maybe I'll figure out better how to do it, but right now. Okay, there we go. So good purple into pink kind of thing going on. And we'll set him aside, let him dry off. Now, we are gonna get another piece of paper towel out. And we're gonna check our green fella. See if he's dry, and if he is, we're going to dry brush some bright green on him. Now this is sour apple, right? And we need him to be a lighter green than he is now, but not too light. And so you could mix two paints together to get the kind of green that we're going for, for uh, this uh, one up mushroom that we're doing, but we can get somewhat there by using this green and dry brushing it a little bit lighter to it some of the darker color underneath shows because it's a little bit too bright this green so if you haven't seen dry brushing before i get it wet in the paint and then i start wiping it off until it just barely leaves any paint and then this is dry I start wiping it on like so. And you can see that I'm not painting the whole surface. I'm only painting part of it. Only those raised portions are catching the bristles and catching paint from it, which is gonna leave this interesting effect, like you see there. And it's gonna create some layers to the paint. a little interest interest to it make it look pretty and it gets much closer to that color we're looking for a 
which I think is going to look fantastic. I think it already looks pretty good. Do you see that uh, dry brush effect? Fantastic. So there we go. So now I need to dry all three of these guys and then we're going to put some circles on there if we can paint the white and then we'll work on doing the bases. These two will be pretty easy. This one might have to go a little bit thicker on because of all the paint that dripped down onto them, but uh, we'll do that real quick. And I'll dry these guys to the hair dryer real quick. So give me a moment. Okay, so on this guy, like I said, I originally used a nickel to draw those circles for painting in, right? But these guys are all bigger. So I figured we might use a quarter and that's about the right size, I think to do those so <coughs> that's what we're gonna do where's that mechanical pencil at right there let's see if i can get these drawn on there right about there centered up on the front Okay, so there's one circle done. Not perfectly visible, but visible enough that I'll be able to see it to paint into it. Hmm, I kind of messed up that line there. Not going to erase. A little bit. Okay. And there's the back side. Trouble is, is that it's not a completely flat surface. So you gotta kind of pivot the quarter as you're doing this. Rotate it up, rotate it down. I did pretty well. And try to keep these relatively the same height as you go around each of the four cardinal points as well. And there we go. That's enough. So that one's done. Let's do the green guy. Or above his head. Pretty good. On this side, about the same height. I've got a little bit better at this, just doing that one, because now I'm not getting outside the lines. About the same height, again, all the way around. Like so, much better. And then last side, but not least. There we go. Okay, there's four for him. And now this purple monstrosity. Purple and pink monstrosity, yeah. Relatively same height. I put this guy under the hair dryer and yet he still feels wet to the touch a little bit. That's when you really soak something in water, as I had to do for the blending. That's just kind of what you have to deal with. Alright, last side. That's about the right height. Just keeping it in line on all sides. And there we go. Okay, now I'm gonna use a detail paint brush. This is just a, a Coco Land number two. I got these off of Amazon, a cheap pack of like 10 or 15 paint brushes for uh, like 10 or 15 dollars. 
something like that. Not expensive. And the white I'm using, matte finish, wicker white, just cheap stuff. Brands of paint don't matter. I use whatever I can find at Hobby Lobby or whatever I can find at whatever local craft store is nearby. If I happen to be at Walmart when I'm buying paints, I'll buy the Walmart brand, whatever that is. All righty. And let's go ahead and do this. It's going to be drawing that line at the pencil left with the white of the paintbrush. Replacing the pencil lead with white. My kids have been getting turned on to older music recently. So now, because they were listening to this song earlier, in my head is, Stacy's mom has got it going on. And I can't get it out of my head. Even though I want to have like Mario or something on in my head right now, because I'm painting Mario things. So why is Stacy's mom playing on repeat in my brain? Because my kids have Amazon Alexa in the house, and uh, every time they get stuck on a song, they love it, and they play it incessantly, which is a good thing. They're getting exposed to new kinds of music, and I like that. All righty. Big white dot for the front. Let's do this side here. And the painting video for this one it's going to be a lot longer than the carving video. It's not always like that, but uh, today it will be. These guys are quick, easy carves, but if you want to finish them with paint, well, paint these little circles can take you a moment. And just take your time to get it done right. Don't rush. Because if you're going to leave them sitting on your bookshelf or something like that, you want them looking good. And if you try to sell them on Etsy, well, you want to look like a quality product. And you know, I imagine these would sell pretty good on Etsy. I'm not going to bother to put any up. I like Mario too much. If I make any more, I just want to keep them too. Sooner or later, though, I'm going to have too many wood carvings in the shelves. My wife's going to get mad at me. Make me give some away. That's okay. There we go. We got two of those done. So he's, he's, he's coming along. And a couple more to go. A couple more to go. So yeah, I'm going to mention it again real fast. Don't forget, please come over to uh, International Association of Woodcarvers on the 2nd and support me. Be there for moral support. Just put a comment in there saying, hey, Johnny, best of luck. You got this, Johnny. Something or other along those lines. Support me because uh, that kind of thing does help me. I thrive on people's goodwill. Oh, that's what you got to be careful of. I got my finger in that wet paint. If I move it around wrong, I could want to track and paint everywhere that I don't want to have everywhere. Be mindful of that and don't make the mistake I just did. And I'll tell you this too. Just like with these videos, if you leave a comment down below saying, hey, you're doing a good job, John. Really appreciate it. That fuels me. It really helps. So please do that. Leave a comment on this video. Like the channel. Subscribe. All that stuff. It's what uh, keeps me going. Gets me making more videos. Gets me encouraged. 
And I need that encouragement because just like everybody, if you don't think that you're doing well or if you don't think that people are enjoying it, you'll stop. And right now I'm having a lot of fun. I don't want to stop. But I do want to know that people are connecting, that they're enjoying the work that I'm putting out on this. So, And the folks you are watching a painting video, you guys are the real OGs. A lot of people watch the carving video, they won't come over to the painting videos. The painting videos don't get nearly as many views, they don't get as much watch time. The painting videos aren't, uh, they're not growing the channel as much. These are here because I like painting videos. If I see someone do a carving, man, I always wanted to have a painting video too just for that carving. And so many folks don't do that. They just do the painting, they just do the carving video and then they leave it at that. Or you gotta pay extra for the painting video. It's like, man, I just want to see what you did. I just, just real quick, it doesn't take much. Well, here it is. I'm not charging extra for a painting video. I'm just doing the painting video. But what I do require is a like, a comment, say something to me, give me some kind of feedback. All right, look at that. So there we go. First guy, pretty much done. That looking pretty good. And you don't have to finish this bottom portion if you don't want to. Just take some black. We can paint those eyes in. And he can be done. He can just be absolutely finished. But we're going to do a little bit more to him, I think. All right. Let's work on our green fella. And again, just painting the white up to the edge of the, uh, the pencil mark. And fill it in. I'm going to like this kind of color green too. The darker green with the lighter green dry brushed over it. I think it's going to pop a bit more. It looks more like a real mushroom. Not, not a real mushroom, but it looks... I don't know, better. I enjoy the look of it better, and I can't think of the right way to describe it. Yeah, much better. Okay. Next circle. Just like so. Same thing all the way around. For those of you who don't know too, I just recently did a uh, a fall festival here in my hometown. Set up a booth and have people come by and buy carvings. And I'll tell you this, that is a lot more work than you might think it is. If you thought that doesn't seem too hard, I'm just sitting in a chair, relaxing. The prep work you gotta do is setting up all the stuff. Set up your table and then you spend extra time trying to figure out how to get the table set right because you want to make sure you display the carvings correctly because what if no one sees this one little guy they won't buy him if they don't see him and he's so neat i want people to see him and then they come down and you know what i got from people they come over and they look at my carvings they say these are fantastic these are perfect i would love to own one of these carvings they're so beautiful and then they'd walk away if you want to own one like I'm here selling them. <laughs> Give me 20 bucks for that thing and you can have it. But they'd walk away. They just want to walk around and look at things. Sometimes, sometimes it feels like uh, people don't value handmade things the way that we used to. We used to value them. But now you can get things so cheap off of Timu or Amazon that people don't want to pay for a handmade item as much. But when you make one and they see it, they still love it. If you got one sitting on your shelf, they're still gonna be amazed by it. They'll be enthralled, they'll want to have one of them themselves. But then you say, hey, 30 bucks and that's yours. And they go, oh, that's way too much money. And you're thinking to yourself, <laughs> shoot, buddy, I spent an hour and a half working on that. And it might be something silly like this little guy, right? Because we'll probably spend at least an hour and a half making these guys between the carving for each one and the painting. Like, it takes time. 
That's fun time. It's time you can invest in something relaxing and enjoyable, but it's still time. Look at that. If for those of you who do want to help out with the channel too, if you want, you can head over to Etsy and buy some carving stickers. I got some wood carvings by Johnny stickers over there. If you want to have a, a sticker with the YouTube logo on it for uh, the channel, you can put on your water bottle or your carving tote if you're so inclined. If you're not so inclined, don't worry about it. It's just a, a way for those who want the opportunity to help so that they can. My goal is to get enough to buy a new camera that will allow me to have higher fidelity, a little bit more definition when I'm carving stuff and when I'm painting stuff. But uh, I do have a new microphone. So if you think that uh, it's things sound a little bit better right now, it's because I'm using a new lapel mic right now. So I don't have to hold that big bulky microphone I had out to my mouth. Keep it near my face while I talk. I get this one clipped to my shirt now, which makes it much easier to record audio. And have it sound relatively good. Gives me options I didn't have. Now I need to get a better camera. And I'll be able to do even better with the videos, better quality. And I want to produce better quality. So far I'm enjoying the YouTube channel. It's been a lot of fun. But that camera's like 600 bucks. That's a lot of money. I can't just buy that. Especially since this is the only thing I'd use it for, really. Yeah, look at that. That's going to be pretty neat. This pink and purple guy, I'm going to like. It'll be a wholly original. You know? You won't see him in a Mario movie or game, but... Uh, still got that same flair, same style. Same style. Be interesting and fun. And when I post pictures on Instagram, people will be like, what, a pink and purple mushroom? What in the world? Somebody is going to think, maybe I don't know as much about Mario as I thought I did. Somebody might Google it and try to find out whether or not it's a real mushroom in Mario. And that is entertaining to me. There we go. This white is not, by the way, being watered down at all. If you hadn't noticed, it is just straight white paint. I want it to be a little bit heavier so that it displays properly. Because when you water down white, it just almost goes away. It is not great for watering down. Well, you can water it down though and make something that's kind of like white, kind of lighten a wood, but uh, it's definitely not going to come out as white. It'll come off as a lighter whatever is underneath it. White doesn't do good at still being white and being mixed with water. Okay, so 
all three have got the white that we wanted to have on there. Now I'm going to dry them off and then uh, we're going to paint the bases up. So back in a moment. And we're back. So we're going to take a little bit of warm beige and we're going to paint the base of our purple fella and lightly our green fella. Now the red one we're going to leave. So we're going to have like three layer levels of uh, difficulty here, right? This one's going to get some black on the eyes and that's it. We're going to have him be done and uh, maybe put a little BLO on him to seal him up properly. Okay. This guy, we're going to do a light coat of beige here, very watered down. And then we're going to paint the eyes black and we're going to take him out to the antiquing solution in the garage and we're going to antique him. And that's what we're going to do for him. And this guy, we're going to do a heavy coat of that beige because obviously we've got a lot of coloring there to, to cover up. And then we're going to take him outside and antique him as well. So <clears throat> you'll get to see different levels of uh, what we got going on here. That cleaned up enough. That's cleaned up enough. Okay. So beige. Now I am going to be doing this unwatered down heavy and just paint it on There we are. So, that's pretty good for a first coat. Now, wet that down real good. And then, do it again. Make it last and spread around. In the other direction. Just about the beige we got on there already. A little bit more, and we're starting the back here and wipe it both directions. Try to spread that stuff out as thin as we can. Okay, and that guy's done. Now, hair dryer again. Okay, and we're back. All right, so now black paint is next. And this is just regular old black. Uh, Apple Barrel 20504E, but like I said, doesn't matter. Just get black paint. And we're going to use these styluses here. Now, these styluses you can get on Amazon pretty cheap. And these have different sized balls on the end, right? And uh, this whole set of them here, look at the paintbrush, all of these just came as a set. And so there's some with rubber here rather than wood, and they've got bigger balls on them. And it's just a ball that you can dip in paint and then use to touch somewhere to leave a perfect circle for this, right? So you can get a perfect circle up to this size by touching it in paint and then dipping it on something. Or you can use these smaller ones and get smaller dots or use this to paint with. So like this little bitty corner here, I can use to paint a nice little line. And we're gonna use that black. And I'm gonna try to paint a simple straight line like so. And then the other side. And there we go, two little eyes. And the one that doesn't get any 
paint down here. You'll get two little eyes the same way. Go ahead and thicken this side up a little bit more. There we go. And now our purple buddy. And there we go. Pearl Buddy's got some eyes too. Now they all got eyes. And that stylus is that easy to clean up. Okay. Next. BLO for him. Antiquing solution outside for those guys. Okay, this is my jar of BLO. Boil linseed oil <coughs> polymerizes. And you can see like see how it started to gum up here and it's gummed up on this right it starts to harden so like whatever surface it sinks into it will harden and create a, a surface on the wood that's kind of plasticky right which is great for making a carving last a long time so if it's going to get handled like this but probably gonna be getting picked up and handled when it's on the shelf so i want to have that polymerization so that's why i use blo right and you can use any kind of uh finish you want to that will do that it doesn't have to be blo but BLO does that quite wonderfully. Now, you got a couple options. I can just drop this guy in here and soak him that way, or I can use a little brush, and in this case, a pipe cleaner, just to brush some boiled linseed oil into the carving and onto the paint. Now, some folks like to use Howard's Feed and Wax. I get that. It seems like an easier solution, but I don't know if Holly Howard's Feed and Wax has that polymerization factor. Because if it doesn't, it's not going to be protecting the same way that BLO does, which is disappointing to me and makes me less likely to use it. But for the guy that gets BLO, there he is. He is soaked and done, and we will pat him dry. And I love the smell of boiled linseed oil. I don't... Oh, wow, look at that. That looks gorgeous. So, yeah. He's going to be great. And I do like that untouched wood. So, if that really excites you, don't paint the bottom if you like that look. Okay? Just paint the top. And you can paint the top lighter if you want to. You don't have to paint as dark and as heavy as I did. But, uh... The antiquing solution that we're going to use will darken wood that's left natural quite a bit more than uh, BLO will. So we had to paint a little bit on the bottom sections of those two other carvings because we're going to antique those guys. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it uh, turns out. So bear with me a minute. I'll be right back. And I'm back. So all three of them are finished up and they have been sealed I normally wait until like the day after to pronounce judgment on what I like the best but out of these I think I like the regular BLO finish the simplest carving I think this guy is probably my favorite but to show you this guy has a light beige in the bottom and then put that antiquing solution and if you're wondering like what is, it, what is this antiquing solution he keeps talking about if you haven't been with the channel for a bit there's a video called turd polish t-u-r-d-p-o-l-i-s-h watch that it has the entire history of the the turd polish i use the antiquing solution what the recipe is how i got it and all that good stuff so i don't like him as much I, that, that, that blending is pretty neat but uh i think it could have been better this guy's second best, and this guy, I think, actually, he's tip of the top. I like the way that natural wood turned down under here, so I think he's my favorite. But I'm glad, that's why I'm glad he did him red. So, if you're, that's, that's why I like doing three different finishes, I like doing separate finishes, so you guys can see what the options are and know what you might want to do on your carvings. So I can waste time, and you don't have to. All you gotta do is watch the video and know, hey, 
I don't have to do the carving twice. I can get the finish I want by seeing what it's going to look like beforehand. So, and now for the money shot. And there we have it, three different finishes. Which one is your favorite? Let me know down below and tell me why it's the red one. <laughs> I liked and I had big ideas for the pinkish purple one and for the green one, but I think that just the simplest one was just my favorite. At any rate, if you like this video at all, if it was any kind of benefit to you, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and thank you very much for doing so. I really hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did and you want to help out, you can head over to Etsy and buy some stickers to support the channel or don't. But definitely come over to Instagram, give me a follow there so we can interact and I can see your carvings and you can see mine. Well, this is the end of the video. Take a look at some of these other videos I got on the channel, see if there's something that interests you. I hope there's something that does. Have a great day. So long, folks.